Hey everyone, today we're going to be making the Harvest Moon Story of Seasons cow. Let's get started. The Harvest Moon cow is a little more complicated than the Minecraft cow, but it will be a nice introduction to using modifiers. Go into right ortho view and switch into wireframe mode. Navigate to your modifier tab, which looks like a blue wrench, and click add modifier. What we want is the subdivision modifier. Notice how it changed how our cube looks. As a personal preference, I like to disable optimal display. In edit mode, we can see that our cube is still a cube, but the modifier is changing how it appears. The goal is to turn this cube into our cow's body. So select all with A, and scale on the Y axis a slight bit. And turn up the viewport display of the subdivision modifier to 2. Shape your cow however you want, but I'm going to flatten the cube on the Z axis. I think it's a good starting point for the body, so let's apply our modifier. Tab into object mode and select this drop down menu. Choose apply. This will change our cube's geometry to that of the subdivision modifier's preview. In vertex select, use C to circle select these back vertices. Enable proportional editing with O, use a fairly large fall off, scrolling your mouse wheel up and down will adjust the size of your proportional fall off, and pull this back up. I'm also going to pull down some of these vertices. I want the body to taper near the front slightly. I'll select this edge loop and scale down on the X axis. Use a small proportional fall off. In edit mode, select all with A. Under the face menu, select shade smooth. Let's add another cube, shift A, choose cube. Put a subdivision modifier on it as well. Turn up the viewport display to two and disable optimal display if you're like me and you like seeing all the edges. This is gonna be the head. Grab it in object mode with G and put it where you want the cow's head to be. Still in object mode, shift D to duplicate this object. This will be the cow's mouth. Get the head and mouth where you want them and scale the mouth object down on the Z axis. The mouth is also a little bit wider than the head in all the references I'm looking at, so scale it up on the X axis. In edit mode, select all the faces for these two objects and change the shading to smooth. There's a lot of jagged edges where these low poly spheres intersect. We'll fix that later, but for now, you can just adjust the subdivision levels. I'm going to move the mouth forward slightly. I want to apply all of the subdivision modifiers, so change the viewport display back to 2 and select apply from the drop down menu. Remember that modifiers can only be applied in object mode. Select all three of these objects and tab into edit mode. Select half of the body by left click dragging, then hit X to delete select vertices. Add a mirror and then subdivision to each of the objects. The order of modifiers is important. I'm going to scale up the objects slightly to make up for the subdivision shrinking them. Let's add the legs. Tab into edit mode, switch to face select, select these four faces, hit I to inset faces. Select these back four faces and do the same. With vertex select, select and double tap G to activate edge slide. Slide the four corners of each of these inset faces to make it more circular. Also disable proportional editing just in case. Hit Shift A, add an 8 sided circle, open up this box and change the vertex count to 8. Move and scale this circle. We'll need a couple more circles, so duplicate this circle with Shift D and move the spare out of the way. I'll select this circle again, try to position it directly under where the leg will come out of the body. Rotate and scale as needed. Bottom view might be the most useful for placing this circle. When it's in place, select this middle vertex and delete it. Alt select this loop of vertices and shift alt select this loop. Hit F3 to bring up the search menu, type in bridge edge loops and choose it. There's a bunch of options over here, but they don't matter because it worked with the default settings. Select this spare circle and do the same for the back leg. Delete the middle vertex and bridge these two edge loops. Position the spare circle to be the bottom of the leg. Select these two edge loops and bridge them. Alt select the bottom circle, duplicate it with shift D, and move it to the, be the bottom of the back leg. Move it to be the bottom of the back leg. Bridge these edge loops. Use Ctrl R to add an edge loop to the leg. Click once to confirm the face placement, and then slide it down to be near the bottom of the leg. Hit E and then F until the red dot points down. This will shape the edge loop based off of the lower edge loop and not an average of the two. Now do the same with the front leg. Alt select the bottom loop, extrude and scale slightly. Same with the back, hit F to fill in the open hole. Select these two vertices and hit J to split the faces into two. And then join these two vertices with J as well. Do the same on the front, make a face and then divide it into four with J. 
Add another edge loop to the leg, move these two vertices forward. And the same with the front. This time you can try using proportional editing. And that's pretty adorable. Let's make an ear. Add a cube, put it where an ear might go, wireframe might be easier. In edit mode, select all and scale down, add a subdivision modifier. Make the display 2 and turn off optimal if you prefer. Scout down slightly on the Z axis and on the Y axis. In object mode, position it where you'd like it and scale it. Apply the modifier. Alt select this edge loop and delete vertices with X. Select the vertex in the front and select all with Ctrl L. Delete with X. Alt select this edge loop, extrude with E and scale. This should be enough geometry, so fill in the space with F. Select these vertices and join them with J. Do the same horizontally. And then continue to connect with J until they're all little quad faces. Select these 9 vertices and move them back. Add an edge loop here with Ctrl R and move it forward. Turn off proportional editing or significantly reduce the fall off. Select all and shade smooth. Make whatever changes you want. I scaled the edge loops down a little bit. I think that'll work. Select the outermost vertices in the middle, and with proportional editing turn to sharp fall off, scale on the Z axis to give the ear a point. And do the same on the other side. Select these two vertices and flatten out the middle. And it looks good, but we need another ear for the other side. I don't want to make another, so let's use a mirror modifier. It'll mirror the object around the object's origin by default. In this mirror object field, with the eyedropper, select one of the body objects, probably the head. Perfect. Let's make the horns. Add an 8 vertex circle in object mode, position it on the head. In edit mode, scout down and rotate. Extrude and scale, disable proportional editing with O if you need. Rotate as needed. While holding control, click to auto extrude a face to the location you clicked and scout down. Hit F to fill the top in with a face. Add a subdivision modifier. Use J to turn this upper face into quads. Select all and shade smooth. Mirror the horn and use the head as the mirror object. In edit mode, position and scale however you'd like. It's looking good, but we still need a tail. Add a six-sided circle. Rotate and scale, extrude a face with E. Control R to add edge loops. Scroll mouse wheel to add several edge loops. I added four. Enable proportional with smooth fall off. Hit S, Shift Y to scale on the X and Z axis. Adjust the fall off with the mouse wheel until it looks how you want it to. Select all and smooth shade. Alt select the back loop and with proportional off, extrude it back. Add a few edge loops and scale them. I'm gonna add some edge loops here to minimize some of this weird lighting. Fill the opening on the end with two faces, and that's good enough. Change your proportional fall off to sharp and position the front of the tail. Let's make the bell. Add a cube and position it. Give it a subdivide modifier. In edit mode, delete the bottom face. Position and scale it. Control R to add an edge loop. Scale the top face down depending on how you want to shape the bell. Maybe scale this bottom loop. Add another edge loop to sharpen the crease. Select all and shade smooth. Add a solidify modifier. You can adjust the thickness if needed. You can change the object origin at any time under the object menu. I set my origin to geometry. Add a torus. Drop the resolution a bit. Six and four should work. Rotate, scale, and position. Scale down the inner loop and up the outer loop. Select these two edge loops and scale on the Y axis. Add a subdivide modifier if you want it slightly higher res. Select all and shade smooth. Add a five vertex circle, position and scale it. With proportional off, extrude. Extrude and scale a few more times to be this thing. I think it's called a tongue. That's good enough, select all and smooth shade. Last is the eyes. You could just texture these on, but I wanna show a Nintendo style optimized sphere thing. If you're making an optimized video game model, sometimes you want your shapes to have a lot of geometry on the edge, but don't want to dedicate too many tries to it. In those cases, try something like this. Shift A, add a 24 vertex circle. Rotate 90 degrees on the X axis. Scale it to be harvest moon cow eye shaped. 
duplicate this shape and rotate it on the z-axis by 90 degrees. Select the original circle, extrude it forward to about where this vertex is. Scale it down like so. Select these two vertices and merge them at center with M. Same with these two. And these. And these. Same on the other side. Select this edge loop, which is now 16 vertices. Extrude and scale like so. Merge these at center again. Now we have a 12 vertex circle. Extrude and scale to here. Merge. Select this 8 vertex edge loop, fill and divide with J. Delete the guide. Select all, scale as necessary, shade smooth. Position it near where it will go on the face, pull back on the Y axis until the bottom nearly sinks into the head. Add a mirror modifier. Select all, rotate and position. Get your view into position sort of like so and rotate back. Use proportional editing to line up your outer edge loop better. Try and pull all the vertices that are clipping into the head out. Again, if you have a hard time with this shape, just texture on the eyes later. Extrude out the outer edge loop and merge at center. To make the udders, add a cube, add a subdivision modifier. Add an edge loop and scale it down in edit mode. Apply the modifier, delete half of this shape and add a mirror modifier. Select these two faces and inset, same with the back. Select these four faces and extrude. Grab on the z-axis without proportional editing on. Scale on the z-axis. Switch the pivot point to individual element. Scale and each set of faces will scale to their own midpoint. Edge slide to make everything more circular. We're basically making a smaller cow to be the udder. <laughs> Delete the upper half. Add a subdivision modifier, shade smooth. In object mode, position and scale to be the udder. Maybe pull the front forward a bit, and there we go, cow done. Now's a good time to name our objects. It's fine to have objects clip into each other, but for this occasion, I don't want occluded geometry. So I'm going to retopologize my model. In this case, we're gonna have our cow's body one solid mesh structure and lower geometry, while still having it maintain its original shape as closely as possible. I wanna merge my head, mouth, and body objects before I start. I set my cursor to origin with shift s and go through setting all my mirrored object origins to cursor and then remove the mirror objects from the mirror modifier. In object mode, select the mouth, head, and body object. Join with control J. It's now one object. Add a plane, select all, and merge at center with M. You could also just add a single vertex. Enable snapping to face and project individual element. Turn off proportional editing. Grab this vertex and place it on the body. Extrude out a few more. As you can see, they snap to the cow's body. Now we can make a new object in the shape of the cow with whatever kind of topology we want. There are many methods for retopology. This time, let's start off with some of the basic shapes to make it easier. Delete these vertices, add a 24 vertex circle. Turn off snapping for the time being. Position and scale roughly where the head connects to the body. Duplicate and position another circle where the mouth connects to the head. Let's add a mirror modifier to this retopo object and delete half of it. Turn on snapping and snap these vertices to the body where the objects intersect. Shrink wrap can be useful to keep your vertices from visually disappearing into the mesh. The offset parameter will allow you to set the distance. Disable the visibility of all the objects except for the retop and the body object. Once everything is in position, connect these two loops by selecting groups of four and making faces with F. Shrink wrap is useful, but I prefer enabling in front in the viewport display. Add geometry as needed by searching for subdivide. Now comes the part where you get to do what you want. Retopology is a time consuming process. I'm gonna to try to speed through it as fast as I can. Retopology will greatly depend on what you wanna use your model for. Low poly games go wild. Just fill it in with as few faces as you can while keeping it looking good enough for what you want. Modeling for other forms of media, you wanna focus on maintaining as many quads and thinking as much about edge flow and ease of editability, especially if there's a possibility that you wanna edit your mesh in the future. Quads are much easier to work with in most cases. I care the most about the edges where the objects meet. I want smooth transitions. Once they're in position, select the edge loops in the middle and use Control-E to mark sharp. 
add an edge split modifier and disable edge angle. This will make the objects look visually separate while still being connected. Where the legs meet the body, I added 8 sided circles as we did with the head and positioned them. Be careful while working around the legs, it'll be easy to misplace a vertex on the leg that should be on the body. Also try to get a nice loop of quads where the legs connect to the body. If there's anything you want to change, add geometry with a knife tool or J and remove by dissolving edge with X. I think rather than re the feet, I'm just going to copy the feet off the body object and add them to this mesh. Select everything from this edge loop down on both legs, Shift D to duplicate, and separate into a new object with P by selection. Select the new feet, Shift select the retopo object and join with Ctrl J. Select these edge loops and hit F3, join with bridge edge loops. Might need to edge slide some stuff around. Turn back on the visibility of the body object and retopo object and snap its leg vertices into position. And that's looking pretty good. Turn off the body object and turn everything else on. Be on the lookout for any faces that have this thing going on. Blender triangulates everything. Faces like this usually just mean that it's chosen the opposite way to triangulate this face than we want. So select these two vertices and hit J, and that looks a lot better. I don't care about keeping it quads anyway, since the mesh is done at this point. And here's my new mesh. Not perfect, but it'll more than work. If we wanted to rig this character, we would probably give it knees, however. Just something to keep in mind. Next time, we're gonna cover how to UV unwrap, create materials with node setups, fake textures, set up lighting, and finally render out our little adorable cows. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this useful. Feel free to ask any questions you might have in the comments. Love you all, goodbye!